Luna. Welcome to Mojo Plays and get your tissues out because we're looking at the 10 saddest Final Fantasy deaths. They were here and now they aren't. And they might have ruined our childhood and taught us that love is dead. Let's go. Before we continue, we publish content all week long. So be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of our latest videos. Biggs, Wedge and Jesse. <laughs> At the beginning of Final Fantasy VII and on the player's first playthrough, there's no reason to think that this journey will ever go further than Midgar. Therefore, we safely decided we could attach ourselves to our dear friends. Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse join the player as members of Avalanche, the group Cloud has joined to carry out terrorist behavior for the greater good. Arguably, they are terrorists, but they're the sweetest terrorists you'll ever meet. During one of the first massive heartbreaking moments in the game, as the group fight Shinra forces as they attempt to drop the plate that sits high above the homes of Avalanche and their respective loved ones, our main party makes their daring escape just before being crushed to death. The same can't be said for Wedge, who falls from the tower that holds the plate, and Biggs and Jesse, who were injured in the firefight and eventually crushed by the falling plate. All of their final conversations are deeply emotional and show a willingness to die that is both moving and upsetting. Galef. While older Final Fantasy titles like Final Fantasy V may lack the cinematic flair and narrative complexity of their successes, they still manage to evoke strong emotions among fans. I mean, Celis sings a freaking opera in Final Fantasy VI in 8 bits, and I've never been more moved in my life. A particularly memorable scene in Final Fantasy V occurs when X-Death ensnares the party and taunts them. Galef, in a brave emotional move, breaks free and confronts X-Death alone. Even though he knows he can't defeat X-Death single-handedly, Galef valiantly endures the onslaught of X-Death's most powerful spells, persisting in battle even after his own hit points dwindle to zero. It's only after X-Death retreats that Galef finally succumbs, having pushed himself past the brink of endurance. Clive. In Final Fantasy 16, Clive's death is indeed a tragic and emotional moment in the game, from a game that loves killing characters off. This isn't Game of Thrones! As the central character, Clive's demise leaves a profound impact on both the player and the story's progression. His loss evokes feelings of sorrow and despair as players witness the end of his journey and the sacrifices he's made for his cause. Clive's death serves as a pivotal moment in the narrative, shaping the character's motivations and driving the storyline forward by using our tears to clear the way. Noctis. So this is farewell. Yeah, here we are. It's all you. We love a sacrifice. Aerith trying to save the world, Biggs and Wedge trying to save the slums, Noctis trying to save everything. Noctis's journey in Final Fantasy XV culminates in a bittersweet conclusion. Knowing he must confront Arden in the afterlife, Noctis willingly sacrifices himself to save the world, reuniting with his beloved Luna Freya. However, this decision means leaving behind his loyal friends Ignis, Prompto, and Gladio. The game poignantly portrays their final night together as Noctis grapples with the weight of their inevitable separation. Despite the reunion bringing him joy, the impending farewell weighs so unbelievably heavy, not only for our four main party members, but for us who've played alongside them as the silent fifth. What the hell is this so hard? Oren. I am also an unsent. You were not surprised. I think I kind of knew. There's been many fights throughout history that have been heavily one-sided. In Final Fantasy X, Unalesca, a formidable and ancient mage in Spira, confronts Auron, a guy with a sword. We'll give you a minute to place your bets below. Did you guess Auron? You idiot. Unalesca effortlessly empowers him and blinds him in one eye. Despite the odds stacked against him, Oren stubbornly refuses to succumb to defeat. Instead, he implores Kamari, a fellow guardian, to protect Yuna, the daughter of Braska. 
This poignant moment not only showcases Oren's unwavering resolve and selflessness, but also adds depth to the game's narrative, highlighting themes of sacrifice, duty, and the bonds of friendship that resonate throughout Final Fantasy X. We also have to watch him kind of die again when he's finally sent to the far plane. We're running out of tears here. This is your world now. Dine. Hell, Marley. Is that a place for Barrett? <laughs> yeah, he's looking fit as a fiddle. Oh, good question. Throughout the original Final Fantasy VII, we get the opportunity to take a closer look at our party and even sometimes fight solo with them as we learn more about their history. Some of the more highly anticipated moments in Final Fantasy Remake and Rebirth have been these solo moments, and Barrett's story was no exception. Finding and confronting Barrett's best friend, who he presumed was dead until this point, is an emotionally heartbreaking moment as his mental state is too far gone to return to a regular life. The emotional roller coaster of believing your best friend is dead, finding him years later alive, and realizing he'd be better off dead is one that could only be handled by the man himself, Barrett. After we fight Dine, he is gunned down by Shinra troops, leaving behind his daughter and laying the burden of his ending onto Barrett. You carry that guilt, that weight. Dine. Dine. Baby. Zack Fair. I'm just kidding. You know I wouldn't do that to you. Of course, we'd already seen Zack's death in the original Final Fantasy VII, but his death in Crisis Core is so much worse, as we spend an entire game in his shoes before losing him to his inevitable death. As much as we wished it would change, the game's conclusion remained unaltered. Zack valiantly battles hordes of Shinra soldiers to safeguard Cloud Strife. Despite his formidable prowess, he eventually succumbs to fatal wounds. The game ingeniously incorporates this harrowing sequence into its final gameplay segment, portraying Zack's desperate, weakened struggles in the face of overwhelming odds. This poignant moment encapsulates the essence of Crisis Core's narrative, emphasizing Zack's selflessness and unwavering dedication to protecting those he cares about, particularly Cloud. Getting caught crying into your PSP back in 2007 was a very shameful moment, and I lived it. For the... both of us. Lev. You'll be... My living legacy. Sid. Sid plays a significant role in Final Fantasy VI as one of the game's prominent NPCs, deeply intertwined with Salus's narrative. After Kefka's cataclysm devastates the world, Sid and Celis find themselves stranded on a desolate island along with other survivors. Over time, as their companions gradually perish, Sid and Celis develop a profound bond akin to that of a grandfather and a granddaughter. When Sid falls ill, Celis assumes the responsibility of catching and feeding him the right fish to sustain his health. Failure to do so results in his deterioration and eventual demise. Sid's passing is a poignant moment in itself, but its tragic impact is heightened by the profound grief it induces in Celis, leading her to contemplate suicide as she struggles to cope with the loss of her last remaining connection to hope and companionship. Tetis. No. Yuna. I have to go. Now, technically, Tetis was never actually alive, as he was a dream willed into existence by the Faith, but it's hard to argue that Tetis' disappearance in Final Fantasy X isn't depicted with all of the emotional weight of a death, represented in Yuna's heart-wrenching reaction. You want to see it? You want to live it? Enjoy crying. 
A standout moment occurs when she attempts to embrace him, only to pass through his fading form, symbolizing the stark reality of his departure. Yuna! Huh? This scene resonates deeply with fans, often cited as one of the franchise's most memorable moments. While Titus can return in Final Fantasy X Part II, his final scene in Final Fantasy X remains impactful, its emotional intensity unaltered by its subsequent events. Aerith Gainsborough's demise continues to stand out as one of the most iconic moments in Final Fantasy history, marking a pivotal and shocking plot twist in Final Fantasy VII. As Aerith reaches out to the planet, attempting to summon Holy to counter Meteor, Sephiroth intervenes and stabs her, prison style. The suddenness and gravity of Aerith's death catches players off guard as the game offers scant foreshadowing of her tragic fate. Prior to this pivotal moment, Aerith is portrayed like any other playable character, even serving as one of the two romance options, further deepening the emotional impact of her loss. Aerith's passing casts a somber shadow over the game's remaining cast, leaving a profound and lasting impact on the narrative. This moment continues to stand tall as a dark mark in gaming history, even on our 100th playthrough. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Mojo Plays and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of our latest videos. Mm -hmm.